This is a test. This station was conducting a test of the emergency broadcast system. This is only a test. <laughs> This concludes this test of the emergency broadcast system. Um, yeah, I was just having a conversation with my mum about AI. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> she's 71, and she's a very, you know, she's a very sharp 71, very interested in the world, but it's quite, we sort of got into the, we got into a conversation about transhumanism, the idea of, like, fusing flesh and machine, and I was a little bit like, I've got to go interview, I've got to go interview a very influential heavy metal band, uh, and she was like, no, but just explain transhumanism to me. So that's why I'm like, sorry about that. <laughs> that's, that's okay. <laughs> um, I, I feel it's, I feel like that's a little bit on brand, though, actually. I feel not that, not that that's specifically what this new record's about or anything, but I do feel like this record does sound like the end of the world, which is fine, like a lot of... A lot of uh, a lot of a lot of the best heavy metal does, but the, the the title is the Latin for the failure of all, right? Correct. And I definitely feel like we're living in a time where there is a failure of all. Is that is that how you see it? Absolutely. That that is one hundred percent dead on. Uh, when we started working on this album, it was right after lockdown started. So you know you've got a lot of unsurety about what the future holds for any of us. There's, you know, isolation, there's despair. There's, uh, we're, we're still in the midst of a lot of, um, natural disaster. So, uh, and not to mention, I just think people are more awful now than they've ever been. And, um, that the earth is, the earth is looking at us, in the way of the dinosaur, the saber tooth tiger, the mastodon, and uh, we're we're fleas on the back of the earth, and the earth is trying to sh- get rid of fleas. I'm going to play devil's advocate. I don't know why I'm going to play devil's advocate, but just so that we can have a conversation, because I subscribe much more to your belief than than not doing. I suppose the sort of counter argument is that you know there were periods of history where if we didn't like someone's opinions, we would take them out into the town square and we would uh, hang them by the neck and then, you know, disembowel them and, you know, while they were still, while they were still conscious, right? Like, you know, yes. we, the, our, our species has lived through very uh, bloody times. And also, you know, I do feel like we're closer to another global conflict than we're not. But at yeah. the same time, it's a long time since there was a global conflict, you know, so I guess, and and also, you know, you look at the uh, progress that we've made in science and medicine and, and all these sorts of things. Do, do you really think that this is the worst humans have ever been? Because I, I guess the argument would be that all of those things would contradict that. You know, that, that's, not to, that's, that's not to take anything away from the likes of Attila the Hun and Napoleon and, you know, and, and the, the amazing work that they all did. I mean, my God, you know, like just when you... When you think of, and I'm joking, I don't consider what they did amazing, you know, uh, for all of the conquests and developments, there's uh, there's a lot of suffering that goes, unnecessary suffering that goes hand in hand with, with anything like that. So I, I truly was being sarcastic there. Um, my point is, um, I, I think what makes it worse now is back then, news traveled at a crawl. And today, we have everything at our fingertips within a fraction of a second uh, with, with technology as it is. So I, I think it's easier to say now that people are worse than they ever have been perhaps because we can learn about horrible things people are doing. But I, I think it's a big part of this same technology that has people so desensitized, you know, that like you've got uh, people that are just ready to turn a blind eye to, almost anything that that doesn't 
please them. And for instance, I saw a panhandler yesterday. Uh, uh, I, I don't know if they were scamming people or if they were just, you know, an honest person, but they looked like they were raising money for a baby with cancer. And my first thought is, is that really what you're doing? You know, I'm, I'm instantly suspicious. And I, I, I think anybody that gets these robo calls on their phone during the day or these emails from some prince in Nigeria that ready to give away millions of dollars, it's no, it's not going to happen that way. You know? Yeah. Yeah. No, that is very, that is very upsetting. I, I, I think there's a thing, I, I, I guess the thing with me is obviously the technology is a, is a huge part of it and the desensitization to things that, you know, deserve the the gravity of some of the things happening in the world, they you almost feel like the world should stop for a while, and then we should contemplate what's happened, and really, you know, whether that's out of respect for people who've suffered within those tragedies, but it, it it doesn't. It just rolls on. I guess the thing that worries me more than anything is that it feels like we don't have any kind of shared consciousness anymore. Like it feels like, say, like in the UK, you know, I think most people in the UK would say that you know the country's in a in, in a mess, but I think they would give, I think every person you spoke to would give a different reason why. And you could say, oh, that's because there's a lot wrong. But you could also say that that's because there is no shared space for news. Everyone everyone gets their news in a different way, so therefore they have a different perspective on things. And I wonder, I mean, that, that's what it feels like when I look at the states. The states feels like, obviously, there's 51 states. There's 51 states, right? I've got that right. Is it 51 states? Uh, is it 50? I think it's 50. Okay, I've just made one up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm from here, and I think it's 50. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought I thought one got added, but I feel terrible if I got that wrong. Um, anyway, obviously, it is, America is like a, a real achievement, I feel, in the fact that it, it traditionally brought together people from all over this massive landmass under, like, one flag. But when I look at America now, it feels... It feels like two countries at least. Yeah, there's, uh, and that's part of the inspiration for some of the lyrics on the album, Divide and Conquer. You know, uh, I think that it's a lot easier for a bipartisan system to stay in control when you've got people divided mostly into two sections. You know, that I, I'm someone that leans more towards the center, and I, I'd like, I'd rather hear ideas from each side and weigh my options rather than align myself with something strictly out of loyalty. Uh, I, you know, I'm not a political person. I'm not. And I try to keep that for the most part out of my music. Uh, but I, I think it's smarter to, to educate yourself on topics and make a better decision for yourself rather than find a completely filtered and slanted source and just stick with that because that, because you trust them, then they've got you. you know? Yeah. 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 Totally. I think there's a bit though with me where I always used to look at rock and roll, punk, hardcore metal, you know, all of these branches of, you know, rock music, the thing that I've sort of devoted my life to. And I presume you have as well, that I always thought this was a space where really there should be a lot of freedom like in terms to in terms of exploring ideas and not blindly subscribing to like one ideology and I, I don't feel like that's the case anymore either i feel like actually having you know having an idea you know i consider myself very on the left like center left but even within the left there's times where i'm like am i on the right now because you're crazy <laughs> yeah yeah and i think that that's that's a healthy way to be i you know i, I don't I, i'm not one that's quick to judge someone for whichever way they lean but like i'd rather see them at least have an open ear and an open mind to what the other side has to say and i think today what you've got is when people are debating all they're doing is waiting for the other person to shut up so that they can say what they've got to say <laughs> and to me that's not a debate that's just a that's just a flat out argument and and no one's going to win that uh i know like i'm stubborn i'm really stubborn and a lot of times i'll die before i lose an argument and it's not something i'm proud of it's just 
you know, I probably missed my calling. I probably would have been a great attorney, but <laughs> it's just <laughs> nothing that I care to do all day long. And to argue with people, it's too stressful. Yeah, uh, yeah, but, yeah. but to me, I, I, I would rather sit down and look, if you think you're right, tell me why, tell me why you think I'm wrong. And maybe yeah. I am wrong. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm wrong about 20 times a day and that's fine. You know, like I, <laughs> you know, I, I want, I always have my views challenged, you know, and I, I spend a lot of time almost like having those debates with myself, but I just wonder whether not that I want to say in any way that I'm exceptional because I think I'm a very average human being, but I think that I, I, I don't know how common that is. You know, I feel like people in the States, you know, you red or blue um, or, you know, now I feel like because politics is so uh, sort of rabid and furious, then maybe you were even aligned in other directions. Whereas actually I, I think what we're both agreeing is that, you really should try and be your own dog. You should try and be free and take ideas from the left, the right, listen to alternative opinions. It's just, I don't know. I don't know whether people are built like that now. And I don't know whether the infrastructure of how we consume our news and communicate with each other would allow us to be anyway. One, one of the, the least attractive traits I see in modern times between people who have a difference of opinion is instead of trying to either have that healthy debate or agree to disagree, it just goes straight to mudslinging when someone disagrees with you or, or has a counter, uh, a counter view to yours. It's, you know, well, you're just a piece of shit. You're just a loser. You're just a, you know, snowflake or whatever. It's like, to me, it's, it's really, so now we're just going to call names like we're, you know, middle school kids. Yeah. No. Well, like, well, I guess the question is, and this is me transitioning to music, is that, you know, you went away for a long time, you know, you lived different lives, and here you are, you know, you've been back for a time now, and they like, acclaimed in the time that you've been back. Why why bother trying to make anything? Why, 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 try, why bother trying to contribute anything to the world if you feel like it's going to hell in a handcart? I think that's the right phrase. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, we have a similar phrase. It's just about the same thing. Um, it's either handcart or handbasket. It's one of the two. Handbasket. We, we tend to say handbasket, but it's the same thing for sure. Uh, I mean, mostly, I, I don't know. It's pro my, my interest is probably honestly more selfish than anything. I've, I've been, I've been at this on and off most of my life. I've had to, I've had to take long breaks so that I could raise my children. My children are grown now and, and now I have the time to do this. Uh, I, I, am definitely less about trying to save the world or, um, or try and change things for the better than I am. Just, these are my observations, everybody. This is what I see. I don't know about y'all, but this is how I'm seeing it, you know? Yeah, and yeah. along the way, here's a, cute little freaking riff you know, I don't know. <laughs> that's I, I think uh art imitates life in its purest form and that's what we tried to accomplish with this album was uh was have the the art a, a direct reflection of the world we're living in right now so um change the world no i mean i think if i think if people take a positive off of it that's a good thing I surely don't want people taking a negative off of it and, you know, uh, creating some sort of uh, upheaval and and try to align it with us. I, that that I'm definitely not down with that. But uh, but yeah, if people can listen to this album and go, I know what these people are talking about. Oh, and it helps them get through the day. I, that's a positive. That's a good thing. Hey, listen, the, the end of the world needs riffs. You know, things will, <laughs> <laughs> it'll be better on the way out. If yeah. You rock uh, to yeah. It. If it's burning down, let's, let's have some shots and, and rock out. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, you, you've said a little bit about what you did during that time away. I suppose what I'm interested in is did you feel, you know, I kind of felt like the cult of your band grew during that time. You know, I felt like, I felt like, 
I felt like there was affection, you know, that was that, that was growing. Did, did you feel that almost from Civvy Street? The, the, the abnormality about this band that works in our favor the most is the fact that we don't even have to work and the band grows. This band has always grown with or without being fed. So when we do actually get out there and work hard and tour and put out new music, it grows exponentially. Uh, and we're seeing results with that right now um, that we weren't anticipating. Uh, our growth in the past month and a half since our first single came out off this album has been extremely significant. Uh, and I suspect that once the album's out, it's going to continue. And I'm happy for that because it doesn't always work that way, especially for legacy bands that come back after an amount of time. Um, it's normal for that to have a moment of uh, of glory for sure, but but to be able to leapfrog off of that into another tier is not the norm. It's not normal, and and we're we've been blessed. The last few years maybe we're networking with the right people maybe it's just good timing i don't know but all of the things that worked against us in the beginning that always seemed like they were an achilles heel for us or just uh murphy's law working against us everything now seems like everything we're doing is trending us in the right direction so we're just going to keep working at it until people don't care i mean how much of that do you think is um sort of serendipity and how much of that do you think is kind of like learning from, you know, maybe not mistakes, but the way things were. Definitely learning from your mistakes is critical. Um, definitely. Like if you're, if you're doing something during touring that doesn't work and this ends up being a cost and a liability, you have to figure out a way to circumvent that and and have that not be a problem. Uh, and I think it goes the same way with songwriting. And, you know, I look back on our albums and I see, I see the flaws uh, that some people might not because, you know, as a fan, you only know what you're, what you're handed. Uh, but I, you know, I, I've, I've always known what the potential of this band was, um with or without the albums that we have in our discography as our representation um so for me when when we did this album following the path of i know what we don't want to do was a lot more sensible than just trying to think about the things i'd like to do that we haven't accomplished yet so you know that <sighs> I, will 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 we ever get rich and win Grammys off of what we do? I don't know. That's really not my goal. My goal, uh, my goal is to have the the band not be a financial burden and have it be uh, something that brings enough to the table that we continue to want to do it. But I also want to leave the ceiling high, you know. So so in that regard write the best songs that we can make them sound as good as they possibly can and throw it out there. And they're either going to like it or they're not. And that's now that's where we're at now. We're so, we're so tired of wondering what people are going to think about this album because it's been finished for so long. And we're getting little tastes of that with these two singles that came out. So I, uh, the reviews have been very favorable. So I, I think we've got an album that's going to connect with people. And, you know, if, if it grows, significantly from there we keep doing it how long has it been between finishing the record and uh and where we are now the album was finished recording um late march last year uh the mix was finished probably early may and then it was mastered before you know around early summer late summer um uh -huh. artwork started uh -huh. around then so yeah we've uh -huh. had a product in hand for quarter of a year now i mean I, i've been doing this long enough to know that it's not as simple as hey we've done the record and it's you know it's on uh it's on streaming services the you know the following day but that does feel like quite a lot of gestation like why was that uh most importantly i think 
uh, we, we wanted, we actually were pushing to get it out towards the end of last year and nuclear bat blast came to us and said, okay, devil's advocate. Why do you want your album out at the end of the year? And we were like, uh, because we want it out this year. And we really didn't have a good answer. They're like, but you, you're not even able to go on tour until the spring. Right. We're like, right. He said, so wait until your album can actually be supported and toured on because if you release an album then you wait several months to start promoting it then you've lost the initial push and momentum that the media is going to give you and then you're just kind of playing catch up so th this was designed to happen this way it was like you've waited this long why not a little bit longer yeah it just yeah. made more sense i think yeah yeah no that's that is smart and i think a lot of things that nuclear blast do are smart i have to say um when well I, I i guess the next question is is when can people in the uk expect to be able to see you play these songs uh i've been trying to find a way to get back to the uk ireland uh just really been wanting to get back there for a while i think the biggest reason why it's been slow to develop is simply because of the complications that brexit has brought with uh you know when when a band is on tour in the mainland and comes to the uk or vice versa starts in the uk and goes to the mainland there's a lot of red tape a lot of paperwork a lot of this so to me it just makes sense for us uh, the uk is big enough for us to go and do a two-week tour so i would just as soon wait and do a two-week tour of the uk ireland and uh and that way we don't have to deal with as much of that red tape that uh, Alexa turn off the timer uh, that we would have to deal with otherwise. So yeah, yeah. T uh, I I'm pushing to get back there. I really want to get back. I love the audiences and I have a lot of friends there. I, when I go visit my mum, uh, she's got an Alexa and me and my brother have all sorts of fun by sitting at the dinner table and saying, Alexa, play Slayer. Alexa, play Raiding <laughs> yes. Blood. And trying to freak her out, I feel a little bit like You're I want right. to do. This. I feel like I want to do the same with your Alexa now. I kind of want to be. But <laughs> I, I feel like you being you, you being the, uh, you being a member of X Order, I should be like Alexa, play Engelbert Humperdinck. You know, it should go the other way. You know, but anyway, true story. That Engelbert Humperdinck was uh, a major influence on one of the original members of this band. <laughs> I love that. I I actually interviewed him the other day, not for the podcast. For anyone listening to the podcast, oh wow. It wasn't for the podcast. It was for a newspaper. Uh, but I interviewed him, and he was very nice. But it was very hard to interview him because, uh, you know, he is of an advanced uh, of an advanced age, and his hearing yes. isn't all of that. But he was he was very nice. He was much nicer than I thought he would be. Actually, I was. That's like, great. That's a. I'm glad you had a good experience. It's better that way. Yeah, I'm going to let you go and have you another the next interview you've got. But I hope that it's not as depressing for the first 15 minutes. <laughs> Maybe this one was. No, so. no, no, no. This was a good interview. You asked uh, good questions and you didn't do cookie cutter stuff. And I always appreciate that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you for coming on the podcast, man. Speak to you soon. Yep. Thanks. Talk soon.